Okay, so, boys and girls, today we're going to talk about the sukkah. For the holiday of Sukkot, it is customary to build a sukkah, and we begin that immediately after Yom Kippur. If you look at the picture here, you see children getting ready to build a sukkah, bringing the wood and bringing the branches for the sukkah. Let's take a look at what that sukkah looks like finished. If you look at the picture carefully, you'll see that we have schach on top of the sukkah. And the schach usually consists of different kinds of branches of leaves. And it's never completely covered so that you can see the sky for the simple reason that the sukkah is supposed to remind us of the very flimsy huts that our ancestors lived in when they wandered through the desert after leaving Egypt. Let's look at the table. On the table, you see the lulav and the etrog as was described by Rabbi Blaine. Well, boys and girls, we sit in the sukkah because we want to remember our ancestors in Egypt, leaving Egypt and wandering through the desert, and it also kind of represents our faith in God, our faith in God that he would take care of our ancestors when they wandered through the desert with difficulty and it was dangerous, and yet the people knew that God would take care of them. I have a story for you this morning which talks about the most valuable merchandise, and in a way, it's related to faith in God. Once a sage traveled by ship across the ocean to a faraway land, and there were many merchants on that ship. Each merchant would boast and brag about the merchandise that he was carrying with him. The silversmith talked about the beautiful silver and jewels that he was carrying. The person who brought wools and silks bragged about the quality of his fabric. That man who carried spices aboard ship said his spices were the finest and the best and could bring the most money. And so each man identified his merchandise and bragged about it. There was a sage on board, and the sage wasn't going to be outdone. He boasted about his merchandise. He praised it very highly, but he refused to identify just what it was. Well, during the voyage, the ship was attacked by pirates, and they seized all the valuable merchandise they could possibly find. But you know what? they couldn't find anything that belonged to the sage. When the ship came to port, all the townspeople gathered to welcome the sage, and they honored him by offering him the position of rabbi. In time, he became wealthy, but he never forgot his fellow travelers, those merchants who had lost all their possessions to the pirates. And time and time again, he would tell his people, my merchandise was the Torah, which could not be stolen from me, and which really proved to be the very best merchandise of all. Thank you, Suzanne. We've spoken about the lulav and the etrog. We've discussed the sukkah and the joyousness of this glorious harvest festival. On the festival of Sukkot, our people remember the exodus from Egypt and the many, many years that our people wandered in the desert. During these years in the desert, the Israelites lived in these temporary shelters or Sukkot. But after 40 years of wandering, they found peace and they found rest in the Promised Land. Now this story is analogous to another situation which should be known to all of us if we know our American history. For the American pilgrims, like the Jews of the Bible, thank God when they gathered in their first harvest in this country, they too had traveled a long way in order to worship God in accordance with their own beliefs. Thus, Thanksgiving Day, the American festival, is really very, very much like, and is even patterned after the Sukkot holiday of the Bible. And so, we build our Sukkot, we bless the Lulav and the Etrog, we thank God for the gifts of nature and the food of the earth. And as we do these things on this wonderful festival, we become one with our people in the past, in the present, and help to build our people's future together everywhere. We hope you enjoy your Sukkot holiday. Chag Sameach, a happy holiday from all of us to all of you. Shalom.
The Jewish scene presented in cooperation with the Radio and Television Commission of the New York Board of Rabbis. Our host was Rabbi Alan Blaine of Temple Bethel of Rockaway Park. Music by Kata Moshe Geffen. Teacher Suzanne Blaine. This pre-recorded. WNBC TV Public Affairs presents The Jewish Scene, produced in cooperation with the Radio and Television Commission of the New York Board of Rabbis. Today's program is devoted to Simhat Torah, Rejoicing in the Law. Our host is Rabbi Alan Blaine. Shalom, everyone, and welcome. Welcome back to The Jewish Scene. We're coming to the close of our high holy day season, Rosh Hashanah, and Yom HaKippurim, the peaks of spirituality, and then Sukkot, our beautiful harvest holiday with the lulav and the etrog, and the marching and parading around in the sanctuary, and the sukkah, the tabernacle, the frail hut, with the sechach on the top. And now we come to the end of our holiday season, to Simchat Torah. And what a joyous day is this. We have ended the five books of Moses, in the evening, men and women and children crowd into the synagogue and the temple. We take all the Sifrei Torah, the Torah scrolls out of the ark, and we march around the synagogue in hakafot, in circuits or, or in rounds. And we carry the Torahs and we sing and we rejoice and the children march with uh, waving their flags and munching their delicious and juicy apples. And the next morning, people are called up to the Torah and young people are called up also for a special honor. A talit, or a prayer shawl, is spread over them, and the rabbi recites with them the Torah blessings. Then we read from the Torah, the last words of the book of Deuteronomy, of the five books of Moses. And right away, without stopping, we immediately begin the first words of the book of Genesis. Bereshi bara elokim, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth to signify the fact that we never stop studying Torah. And why do we study the Torah? The words of our tradition, Ki heim chayenu b'orach yameinu, for it is our life, the length of our days. Torah study civilizes. Torah study humanizes. Torah study brings compassion, understanding, love and peace. All of this is exemplified in the prayer which came to Moshe Geffen of the Park East Synagogue in New York, accompanied by Bob Reisenman, is about to sing for us. It's the prayer right before the important...